I'd like to thank everyone for, for coming in and spending the afternoon or the daytime if you're coming in from Indonesia with us and our fellow panelists here. Uh, I'm really excited about this topic and what we're going to be discussing today. So it's an introduction to Indonesian art more than Batik and we've got some really great speakers joining us. The structure of the webinar will be the speakers will talk for roughly five minutes just to give a, their take on the topic and the introduction to Indonesian art and then we're going to move to a more moderated discussion and then at the end we'll have questions from any of you so please pop them in uh, as soon as you think of the question. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the Indigenous people on the many lands in which we're meeting. For me, uh, I'm speaking from Gadigal land uh, of the Eora Nation here in Sydney. And so we pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, I won't go into too big of an introduction for each of our panellists because you, you've read their bios. So we might just jump into it with a short introduction that the idea for this event came to me based on my own journey in terms of exploring Indonesian art. You'll notice I've got a little bit of Indonesian art behind me there, which I surreptitiously stole from my parents' house uh, when I moved into to this new place. Indonesian art hasn't been a, a big part of, of my life. It's something that my mother had because she's Indonesian and I just sort of was unconscious of it in my household growing up. As I've been entering into AYA and these youth associations, I've found really interesting opportunities to explore Indonesian art and talk to people about Indonesian art. And that's really enriched my experience in the Indonesian community. And that's why I wanted to speak about it in this, this webinar. I might move to you, Confia, first for your presentation, because this is something that you're very passionate about, the intersection between Australians and Indonesians. And you've got a lot of really fantastic initiatives around that. So I'm going to bring up your slideshow here. Uh, and you might get started with your presentation. Sure. Um, uh, can it, uh, I'll, uh, I'll go through them uh, pretty quickly. Um, so my name is Confer, and I um, been I suppose been collecting. Indonesian art, contemporary Indonesian art, uh, art for about 10 years. Um, I started with my first collection. Can you go to the next uh, slide, please, Dan? Uh, that's a work by Maria Andrasari. That was my first, uh, first artwork, first contemporary Indonesian art, bought in 2011. And I bought it from Santi, who's a, also a panelist today. Um, so I always blame her for a, a very expensive piece of art purchase that um, um, has changed my life forever. Um, so the, this is a, a, a piece by a Jogjakarta-based uh, female. Uh, it really spoke to me at that time. It, was in a, it wasn't such an expensive piece of artwork. It's relatively small. You can hang them on the wall. It's a textile. It's about mother and son. It, it speaks highly to me because of, um, you know, because it reminds me of my own uh, my own mother, basically, because I, I grew up in a hairdressing salon, and this is the kind of things that we look at all the time, you know, which is intersection of art. So it's, it's something that's quite personal. It started as something that's quite personal. Um, can I go to the next slide? I've got a lot of slides, so I'll go them pretty quickly, and hopefully, yeah, uh, hopefully we can. Um, you, I mean, if any of them of interest, you can always ask them to give you a copy of the slideshow. Um, so this is uh, just going through this. In 2012, I started collecting a bit more and the next one that I think of note is a perch, uh, uh, I suppose an artwork by Sony Rawan. Um, we also developed a friendship with Sony and this is one thing I'd like to uh, discuss about collecting Indonesian art. It's not just about the art, but it's actually the relationship, the artists. And so I collected, uh, this is in 2012 and this is a piece from 2009, uh, which also uh, in the book of Indonesian Eye, which is a very good book on contemporary Indonesian art at that time, around 2010. Um, but in 2000 and, um, now 2018, uh, at that time, Jill, who's also another panelist uh, today, um, who had uh, who had uh, multicultural arts Victoria at that time, we invited Sony for a, uh, a show, a solo show in Melbourne. Uh, it's a selling show at North Vacancy Gallery and where he did a live painting and also sell some of his artwork. Okay. 
Can I go to the next slide, please, Dan? Um, so uh, relationship, well, the artworks, if, if you can see, it's getting sort of like larger and larger. Uh, <laughs> this, is a, <laughs> this is a work by Harris Pernomo, uh, and it's uh, 20, uh, there, there's 100 and something of, this, of these babies, they're life size. I've got about 20 of them, and National Gallery of uh, Victoria has got about 100. Um, they're, they're quite difficult to hang because they've got little knives at the end of it. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a very personal work of Harris Bernomo. I'll just keep going for the next one. I'm conscious of time. Um, in 2014, uh, we had this idea at that time with uh, Santi and Brian. Uh, we decided to do a show of contemporary Indonesian artists in, in Rome. So we brought the artworks and the artists, and you can see the photo of the artist there, to a, a gallery in Rome. It's, it's called Macro Gallery in Rome, uh, where we show the artwork. And the idea is that the artists also have the experience of um, you know, seeing the audience, a very different audience. Um, and um, yeah, it's a very different environment. We continue this through. Um, I'll just get, go for the next slide pretty quickly, please, Dan. So uh, we continue this, in, we call them initiative in 2015. Uh, this one we did in, um, in Melbourne. Uh, again, these are all Indonesian art. And I suppose uh, why I think they're interesting is because they're not your, what you would think as Indonesian art. They're not traditional in any way, but it, it derives from very traditional um, arts and crafts uh, skill that we, have, that we have a lot in Indonesia. Um, uh, I'll just go to the next slide, please, Then, uh, Next slide, please. So, um, this is another one, uh, uh, Beyond Belisiring, which is curated by Santi. Uh, sorry, can we go back one slide, please? Uh, Beyond Belisiring, uh, uh, the slide before. Can we go back one? This one here? Oh, go back, go backwards, please. Yes, this one, yep. So 2016, we decided to bring a, a few Artists from Bali. Uh, sorry, next one, please. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, this one. Mm. Oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, sorry, it's a bit delayed on my end. So okay. we've uh, uh, quite a few, about 10 artists from Bali. And again, this is another show in, uh, in Melbourne, supported by uh, Multicultural, Multicultural Victoria and uh, Arts, uh, Arts Victoria as well. And this is when we started our initiative, Project 11, uh, which is like a uh, initiative that my wife and I started to really support um, contemporary and quite uh, challenging works. And this, as you can see, these are difficult works that not, not your daily uh, you know, paintings that you hang on the wall. And some of them quite large. The painting on the bottom right, that's about two by three meters from memory. So that, they, they're all quite a large size. Um, and can I get to the next few slides? Next, next one. Um, this is uh, in Asia Topa. Um, we, this, we supported, again, this relationship with the artists started with, uh, this is the Tisna Sanjay, which is probably the, one of the most important artists out of Indonesia, uh, based in Bandung. And he did a show this together with the support of uh, Jill, uh, Jill Morgan. And um, uh, we created this particular uh, show and it was part of Asia Topa. It's a performance piece. Uh, it's a bit crazy. Over five days, it was 35 degrees hot. They do reak. If you've never seen reak, it's it's a it's a very uh, Sundanese type performance. It's it's really really out there. They go in trance. They take on um, uh, things. And again, this is the development of the collection because in the beginning it was always just be a, a piece of art. It gets a bit more, so it becomes a performance and things like that that we work with the artists. Um, can I get to the next couple of slides? Um, um, this is probably the last of the large scale exhibition. It's, it's an open call uh, on a show called Prampuan, um, which is curated by Santi. And uh, we invited about eight, uh, sorry, it was an open call and we had nine, nine artworks of, with 10 artists on works related to the issue of being a woman in Indonesia. So it's about marriage, about sex, education, about image, um, and all the, the other things that uh, a lot of them are tabooed and not usually discussed with uh, in the open. Um, next slide, please, then. Next slide, okay. 
Um, so in 2019, uh, because, um, sorry, yeah. In 2019, because of the, uh, the collections, um, I, I start looking at larger collection, uh, a larger piece and the, the work that you see, this actually like a mechanical wooden piece uh, uh, created by Rudy and Ratno. The, the piece on the table there was by uh, Apisa Tiawan. That's going to go in the show uh, in Bandura Homestay. And the large, the other one is actually a, a life size, um, I suppose a gun, anti-aircraft gun made, made entirely out of wood, paper and PVC. Um, and I'll just go to the next few more slides. I'm mindful of time. Um, with collection, the larger items, this is work by Tisna and you can see the, the, the work on the top right hand corner that's, a, uh, that's about two by four meters. So the, some of these items are quite large, very, very large. Um, and the idea is to be able to share them. Uh, at the moment, they're in storage in Ballarat. And the idea is to be able to, uh, to um, store, uh, to be able to share them with the people in Melbourne uh, once, they, uh, once the curator come, come, come in. Uh, just need a cor correction, the, uh, the, the show in Bali, sorry, Santi, it's not Santi that curated, it was, uh, Mara and Army that curated that uh, Beyond Bali Searing. Apologies, getting old, I think. Um, <laughs> next one, please. Um, next slide, please. Uh, this is another collection of Harry Dono, again, very in, important Indonesian artists, some paintings and some sculptures. Uh, next one. Oh, okay. I, I want to go back to, can you go back to a few, uh, to the Prampuan exhibition? I thought I had one extra slide, but I didn't. Absolutely. Uh, one more. Okay. So this particular uh, work is now being represent, uh, being presented again in uh, Castleman Castleman Art Gallery, and we call it from 2021. Um, and it's it's being shown for about twenty uh, un until I think until October or November. So the um, the the idea is that the collection stays in Melbourne, and when there's a museum or any organization that want to show it. We, we have to share and because this is showing a different part of what we believe as Indonesian art. I suppose that's that's all from me and I'm sorry I go a bit over time. Um, thank you, Dan. Not at all. Thank you, Pakon, for, for particularly all the really interesting uh, images. I'll now pass over to Mbak Santi and she's got her own presentation she'll bring up. And maybe while she's doing that, I'll just mention that Akon is in, in lockdown in Melbourne and so is, is Jill. And Santi, you're in, you're in Jakarta, so it'll be interesting Jakarta. to see, yes, your take from uh, the other side of the ocean. Yes, thank you, Dan. Uh, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Santi and I'm art, I am an art advisor. And what I do is basically helping different collectors in building their art collection. Uh, and I'll be talking today about collecting Indonesian art, but I would like to start by briefly touching on the history of collecting in Indonesia and the development of Indonesian art before we actually talk about how to start a collection and navigating the Indonesian art scene. I'll try to be very, very brief. Um, okay, history of collecting. So we cannot talk about art collecting in Indonesia without mentioning one very important figure that has set up pretty much the blueprint in collecting uh, in Indonesia for, for decades until now. So that person is actually Sukarno, our first president. Um, he was just a very uh, epic collector, uh, was the biggest and arguably most important art collector of modern Indonesian art. Uh, his collection consisted of around 16,000 works of art and uh, most, most of them are now displayed in different presidential palaces in Jakarta, Bali, Jogja and, and Bogor. So Sukarno was not only a collector per se, because he was a very strong supporter of artists. He was kind of like a sharing partners to them. Um, and so he, he was not only acquiring commissioning uh, artworks, but he was also promoting uh, Indonesian art. He was a great ambassador for Indonesian art and was friends with many artists. I'm just gonna show some photos of him. It was him with some of the uh, very important artists uh, modern arts in Indonesia, you see number, uh, this, this person is actually a Afandi. Um, and just gonna share a few. This one with uh, not only local artists, but he was also friends with a lot of 
the uh, uh, the expatriate artists at that time living in Indonesia, like Rudolf Bonnet and uh, Le Meyer. Um, and this is on the left, uh, him with Dula, uh, who was actually, he's probably most, uh, his, his closest friend. And Dula was very important because he was actually the curator of his collection at that time. And you see him here. Um, in Sanggar Plukis Rakyat, which was one of the art association founded by the artists, Afandi and Hendra um, And, you know, he, he, was, he was always strate strategically display uh, the artwork in, in the, the palaces. So he could actually promote the work to, to many of his state, uh, state guests. You can see him showing a Balinese uh, sculpture to Jawaharlal Nehru at that time. Um, she can see a lot more pictures. So this is another important uh, painting. Um, you see him as well here uh, during a press conference in Jakarta. Behind them, there's a painting by uh, Basuki Abdullah. So, all right. And I think um, he was at that time very much also in line with his agenda in building Indonesia and nationalism. So he also commissioned many artists to do public art in Jakarta. It was a massive um, uh, initiative. You see, this is a painting by Mukhtar in the House of Representatives in Senayan. Um, this is also another painting. He actually uh, worked with the vice governor at that time, who was also an artist, Heng An Tung, um, and they were uh, really commissioning a lot of public art in Jakarta. This is probably one of the most famous one, the welcome, uh, like the welcome statue. We call it Patan Slamat Datang at that time uh, for uh, Asian Games 4. Um, and this is uh, another mural by Sujoyono in the airport, uh, Kamara, Kamayoran Airport. But at the moment, the, the condition is not great, uh, but it was a really, really big uh, initiative that he did at that time. But what most important uh, about him, I think, is the fact that he documented his collection in a five volume book, books. Uh, it was called Paintings and Statues from the Collection of President Sukan of the Republic Indonesia. And the books are so influential that he has been used until today as a benchmark for collectors and art lovers um, to, to kind of like, uh, to develop a significant collection of modern Indonesian art. So what kind of collection does uh, Sukarno have? Um, he, he, you know, he basically collected almost uh, all of those very important artists living in Indonesia, but a lot of them, of course, in line with his agenda of nationalism, a lot of revolutionary works. As you can see, this is a very iconic work by Sujoyono. It's called uh, Friends of Re Revolutions in the Presidential Palace. Um, this is another work by Dula as well. Um, and he also collected the, the, the beautiful Indies paintings uh, by local and expatriate artists. Um, a lot of um, traditional Balinese paintings as well. This is by a lot of the expatriate at, uh, artists living in Indonesia at that time. But he was also very uh, famous for his collection of women. But what's interesting about his uh, women paintings were that they either were portrayed as in, his, in, in their traditional costume um, and or uh, as a mystical fi figure. Um, yeah, and then, uh, so I think his collection was really wide range, but it was very important because it's kind of record, it was like a rec it's a record of history uh, you know, the, the struggle of independence and building the nations and how much artists were very much involved uh, in that whole period. Okay, so before we talk about our collecting, I hope I'm not um, uh, too uh, long with this, but I think it's kind of important to talk briefly just about the development of Indonesian art. Uh, it's a very, very brief timeline to kind of history, uh, to il illustrate the history and development of Indonesian art which I think will be useful in this context. So when we talk about modern Indonesian art, we always start with Raden Saleh because Raden Saleh was considered as the pioneer of uh, modern Indonesian artists. So he was 
he was from a very wealthy family. He was very well educated in Dutch. In Holland, he learned from many uh, important Dutch painters. So he was a court painter as well. So he did a lot of portrait paintings. Uh, you can see the very strong Dutch influence. Um, and this is the kind of work that he did. Um, and then afterwards, at the same time, in the 19th century, in Indonesia, a lot of local and expatriate artists at that time were working in the style, what we call uh, Moy Indi, which means the beautiful Indies. So the, the works that these artists were doing were basically depicting the romantic, the, like the idealistic and romanticized kind of works of Indonesia. And this is by one of the most famous uh, painter, Abdullah Surya Subroto. And this is another example by Leo Ellen, which is another famous Dutch painter working at that time. But at the same time, from the Indonesian side of it, we had a lot of uh, nationalist artists like Sujoyono, for example. And with Sujoyono, we consider him as the uh, father of, of um, modern art of Indonesia because he uh, said that, you know, we should do works that depicted the soul of the country, of the people. So he come up with works, uh, he was very much against Moy Indi, so he, he come up with works like this. Uh, this is of a woman that he was uh, involved with at that time. She was a prostitute, she was very ill, um, and this has become a very iconic, um, uh, portrayal of, of a work that actually is supposed to kind of depict, uh, portray uh, Indonesian soul. I'll uh, show you another work. Oh, this is another work by Sujoyono. Uh, it was showing his family actually seeking refuge from the bombing of the Dutch at that time. Okay. So uh, Sujono was very visionary and then he uh, established a lot of uh, art association at that time with a lot of other important artists. They work in what they called sanggar or studios. Uh, and those uh, art associations were very crucial, working together with Sukarno and uh, in their nationalistic agenda at that time. So moving on, we have, uh, you know, in the 60s on work, we, ha we had the art school ex establishments, which I think is very important to mention because we have, sorry, let me go back. So these art, art schools uh, are very important, especially when we talk about contemporary artists as well now. Um, and when we're talking about collecting areas, because they've become the pillar cities. So we have Institute Technology of Bandung, Institute Kesenian Jakarta in Jakarta, and we have Institute Seni Indonesia or EC in Jogja. So now very often, uh, most of the artists are actually working and living there. Uh, even when we have artists, for example, from Sumatra, uh, most of them, or Bali, most of them will actually move, for example, to Jogja because uh, they want to study there. And, and, um, and these cities become very, very uh, uh, good places for, for artists to actually uh, study, work, and end up living there. Um, okay, so, and then with this art school, what is important actually they develop a very strong style that is still quite apparent now. For example, in Bandung, because the school was developed by, uh, founded by a uh, Dutch, Dutch teacher. So the curriculum at that time was very Western. Um, you see at that time it was, uh, you know, Cubism was very popular. So a lot of artists were kind of working in this direction. And then you had like Ahmad Sadali, who's also kind of combining with what, um, you know, with Indonesian elements like Islamic uh, uh, elements and all that, but still very much Western. Um, and then when we talk about um, Jogja, at that time, uh, it, was, it was funded by the Indonesian government. Um, it was all about, again, nationalism and, and um, also a lot of artists working in this, in this uh, school was very, was very decorative. It was kind of picturing what uh, uh, the Indonesian kind of like pattern, craftsmanship, um, and also a lot of social political works. This is uh, another example from Jogja school. Um, and I think Jogja and Bandung until now 
are still the most important in terms of creating kind of like certain style until today. Okay. And then of course, moving on in the 70s, uh, we have the new art movement, which actually the beginning of, of contemporary Indonesian art. So we have artists like Jim Supangkat and FX Sarsono, who was basically saying uh, art was not just decorative uh, paintings. Uh, you can do uh, installation, video, and, um, and different kind of uh, medium. The most important thing is the sub, the, you know, the, the, your ideas. So that has become kind of like the, the beginning of contemporary Indonesian art. Okay, I'm just going to make it, um, I'm just going to move on. Uh, okay. And then we're talking about the art market in the 90s, which was very important because uh, a lot of the international auction houses actually opening their sales room in, in Singapore, targeting the Indonesian collectors who were at that time very keen in, um, very keen in getting back their heritage. Um, and most, a lot of them actually went all the way there to actually get the works back. Uh, and then, of course, we have like establishment of local galleries starting in the 90s and foundation like Timothy. And then in the 90s, what was very important is we had a lot of Indonesian artists being uh, taking part in very important uh, international exhibitions like Kagoma. We had uh, Heridono. Um, and also, you know, like Dadang Cristanto, who's now living in Brisbane. Um, and then and then we have the art market booming in the, uh, the first one was in 2000 and then the second one is 2008. Um, and we had for the first time, this is the booming of contemporary uh, uh, art. And it was triggered by this particular painting by Putusu uh, in, in from Bali. So, and of course now we have a lot of artists who are kind of working globally, working with, um, international galleries outside like Masriadi and, uh, you know, uh, like I took Christine as well. Sorry, I think my timeline has just got mixed up. I took Christine who's working with uh, White Cube now. Um, and then at the same time with all these different uh, art fairs and international exhibition in Indonesia as well, we have a lot of important um, fairs, uh, I think Confrey probably can talk about this later because Confrey has a program which is very interesting in relation to art job um, that really showcase uh, the best of the best of Indonesian art and, and it kind of provide a platform for artists uh, uh, in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. See, this is art job. Um, and this is just uh, a few samples of uh, artists really uh, like currently working uh, globally as well at like Dang Wiharso and Eko Nugroho. Um, and we've had a lot of artists actually uh, participating a lot of big international um, exhibition. This one was in NGA in Canberra. And uh, I think one of the best achievement, one of the, you know, uh, achievement that we have is also uh, with Ruang Rupa being uh, appointed curator of the World Art Exhibition uh, for the next documenta. Okay, so I think I'll go back now. Um, sorry, hold on. Okay. Okay, so how do we um, start collecting? Um, I have uh, pretty much for a basic principle, like guiding principle, uh, if you want to start collecting, uh, but this is probably slightly different in Indonesian art scene, but I think, I think it's still a good basic principle. Number one, train your eyes and start learning. Just see as much art as possible so you can train your eyes, especially in, rec in recognizing quality and diversity. I think that's really, really important. And I really encourage you to have an open mind as well. Uh, you know, learn more about new and very unfam like unfamiliar artwork. Secondly, find your unique focus. I think this is very useful. Um, 
focus and continuity is I think is very important. And you can always uh, find, for example, medium, you want to focus in uh, different medium, for example, or art genre, or uh, different themes or ideas or different period in history. Or if you want to focus on female Indonesian artists, for example, I think I think when it comes to collecting, you should not take the joy of collecting process. But at the same time, I think if you are simply thinking about a focus for your collection, it will kind of help to make more conscious decision and limit impulse purchases as well. Um, okay, the next one is consider your long term goal. Um, it's uh, and then the next one, I think we can talk about this later in the question and answer because I think I'm kind of like way over time. Uh, and get connected. I think this is what Confer also mentioned in Indonesia. Uh, connection is also very important and friendship. So how do we collect Indonesian art and how do we actually navigate Indonesian art scene? We talk about, you know, training your eyes and start learning. Uh, knowledge building is very, very important when you start. Uh, in Indonesia, I think, uh, books are probably a bit difficult to get, especially if you're not in the country. So social media uh, has become a very important um, uh, aspect, I think, uh, when it comes to learning about Indonesian art scene. A uh, website like Indo Art Now, that kind of uh, documents a lot of uh, exhibition on Indonesian art is also very useful. Um, and it's the same thing, where do you get your artworks? You can go to galleries, auctions, consultant, and in Indonesia, you can get directly from studios. Um, the good thing is about um, Indonesia is you can get to know the artists, build friendship, uh, but the bad thing is there's no standard pricing structures, which means uh, artists work with different galleries and most of them are not represented by galleries. So you have to learn all this kind of like different, you have to kind of realize there's a, uh, this different uh, pricing structure available. And some artists don't have websites, some do, but they're definitely big on social media. Mm -hmm. Again, so uh, connection is very important. If you know someone, it can go a long way. I think that's it for me for now. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much, Santi. It was a great journey through the, through the history of <laughs> Indonesian art. And I'd love to pivot then to, to Jill, because as you started with Santi, so much of art thrives when people in power and governments support yeah. and throw their weight behind it. And Jill, you've got great experience uh, from the public side of, of the art community. So we'd love to hear your thoughts uh, on the topic. Thanks, Dan. Um, yeah, I'm Jill and I'm in lockdown Melbourne at the moment. And uh, speaking from Wurundjeri country of the Kulin Nation. So I, I think art is a really powerful tool to bring people together. And when we talk about Indonesian art, I was just reflecting on, you know, beyond, you know, batik. When I first discovered Indonesian art, it really blew me away contemporary Indonesian art. And I think it's a mirror into a community. Mm -hmm. Art is a way to really go deeper and explore, I guess, the nuances of a community. It's not just a tourist destination. It's this really creative, wonderful place where you can explore um, people. And both Santi and Confer have talked about the importance of relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're wanting, um, if you don't know where to start, that's also about relationship and just asking questions and also just discovering what, what you yourself like. And going to art fairs like Art Jog was a real eye opener for me personally, because you can get to see the work all in one space but you can also get to meet the artists as well. And I think that in itself is really important. And coming from an organisational perspective, I ran multicultural arts in WA and also in Victoria, and are now working still within the multicultural sector. I think it's so important because art transcends language. It can transcend religion. It can 
instead of dividing people, it can actually bring people together. So I think um, when we look at the power of art, it is quite, it's quite deep and the relationships that can be formed through collecting and through just interest. Sometimes, you know, you start by not understanding where to first buy your first work, but just having an interest in the work is also really important for arts practitioners. And I think um, cultural exchange is really important in the art world. I've worked very closely with CONFA and with Santi to bring two communities together. So it is this real dialogue and discussion. And you saw through some of CONFA's uh, collection that we brought many of the artists to Australia and they met with the local community, the local arts community, but they also got to explore the National Gallery and to really connect and look at this, this connection deeply. So I think if you're in a position to open doors and create cultural exchange, it also creates cultural understanding too. So it creates an important... So when I went to Castlemaine and saw the Indonesian work in Castlemaine, I just saw people people's eyes were open because they, all of a sudden, they saw a very different Indonesia. So this is country Victoria and in a very small gallery, but the, the power of having the work in this very, in this local community that probably has never connected, you know, to Indonesian art before, I could see the difference. People there were really, um, wide-eyed they wanted to know more and I think through art you go on this journey where you do want to find out more you do want to explore so I think the power of the work is is very important so all the work we've done to date and still do is about humanity and I think the artists also actually explore different aspects of the humanity and they're a mirror into our times. Like a lot of the work recently is about the environment. It's about religion or bringing people together. So I think when we look at the work, I think that it's not just transactional. It is really very much about building friendships. So um, between Indonesia and Australia, art can transcend the politics and I can remember being in Indonesia during the Bali bombings with some artists and all the, the, the people in government didn't want to talk about politics or want to mention anything but the artists just connected and to me that's where uh, cultural diplomacy really starts it's people to people links and and that's where art plays a really pivotal um, place. I, I love Thanks a lot there. of your comments there, Jill. They're, they're really fantastic to hear. I wanted to, to stay with you for a moment and maybe try and explore a little bit behind the curtain. In your role with Multicultural Arts Victoria, how did you interact with Indonesian artists? So, for example, if there are Indonesian artists listening into this webinar, and they want to get their art out there and connect with people and forge these people to people links. What were some of the ways that you saw this happen? Maybe not just in the Indonesian to Australia community, but some of the other communities that you're dealing with in that role. I think it's um, developing relationships. I think it's very important. And, and to make the connections, like Confer and I, um, in the next couple of weeks, I'm hoping to take one of the art centres in Melbourne to visit Confer's collection in Ballarat. So there's these local artists also, I mean, arts workers get a greater understanding of Indonesian art and the possibilities, because I think if you can dream and imagine the possibilities open up and I, and 
Santi also mentioned, um, Confer and I have been going backwards and forwards between Indonesia and each time with, you know, there's a different group of people that come, come with us. So it, it opens up and it's like the ripple effect. Like once one person understands the, the depth of talent within Indonesia, it opens up opportunities. And, and then there's this local cultural exchange. So I think it's asking just and opening up, extending, you know, the hand of friendship, if you like, or, you know, getting um, the knowledge and sometimes you don't know where to go, but if you have a point of contact like Confa, like Santi or myself, we've all got contacts here in Australia that can be utilised to build those connections. Mm, absolutely. And Confa... Can I, can I add that on, uh, on the question about Jill and her um, relationship and support? I, I also want to say, I mean, I've known Jill for many, many years, and she's probably one of the most uh, supportive and, and uh, yeah, kind person to artists. Um, I remember when we brought in uh, Erica, oh, well, the Bandung, um, Erica actually stayed at Jill's house. Uh, and also, I think when there was uh, some court dances from the Sultan in Yogyakarta, they were staying at Jill's house. So Jill's not only uh, bringing them, uh, supporting us, supporting the Indonesian relationship, she actually opened her house to a lot of artists. And uh, yes, even some more exciting ones and not exciting ones. So that's, that's the kind of relationship that, that we're building here. And, uh, you know, and I think Jill's been doing it for years and years. Fantastic. I love the sort of analogy between opening up your home and opening up your mind towards other communities. It's, it's just, it's wonderful to hear. Confi, staying with you, I wanted to dive into a little bit. Indonesia is so diverse and many countries are diverse. They contain many cultures and communities within them. Even just through the slideshows that you were, you were presenting and Santi was presenting, we could see very strong Javanese images, very strong Balinese images, the topic of this webinar is more than just Batik, another prominent sort of art in Indonesia. When you talk to people unfamiliar with Indonesian art, how do you convey some of that complexity while still being accessible to people who don't know much? I think I, I'm, I'm not an art critic and everything is, a, it's, everything is about um, uh, almost impulse for me. Uh, and uh, there was a question before about Sukarno's uh, the president mm. how it's java centric I, I think it's not not because it's java centric because it, it speaks it speaks personally to him so when i acquire an art it, it doesn't bother me whether it's from java uh, from Jogja or bandung or whether the maker is man woman muslim christian whatever the work has to speak to you uh, and i think that's what i'd like to say if, if you start to collect or you're looking at collecting get works that are speaking that speaks to you what santi was saying in the Look, is look, keep looking. Uh, open your eyes and see as many as many work as possible because you'll find that um, no matter what they are, whether they are a, a modern batik or an old batik, some work really speaks to you, and that's the kind of work that you should be collecting if you if you want to collect. Those are the kind of work that that will be beneficial for you. Mm. And going to the second part of that question, Santi, I might I might bring you in here. The second part of the question is asking about the development of contemporary Indonesian arts. It's becoming more diverse and criticizing current issues. And I actually attended the exhibition at the National Gallery of Australia in Canberra with my grandma. And uh, she's 94 years old. And for some pieces she said, well, this isn't Indonesian because mm. they were just so fresh, so modern uh, and in some ways confronting. Where do you see that trend going with Indonesian art? Well, I think that's what's really interesting when we talk about, I think I, I, I really want to relate this to also the question about uh, Tukarno's collection being Jeff-centric. I think it is a part being personal, but at the same time, I mentioned about these schools, art schools, which are very, very important in terms of uh, building communities and, and artists. Uh, most of the schools are actually in Java. So we always, 
we when we talk about annotation, I will always talk about Bandung and 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 uh, uh, Jogja and also Bali. So um, and then when we talk about contemporary artists, artists this day, especially with global, uh, you know, with 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 global going global, uh, um, uh, they they have access to to internet. Uh, they actually want to be part of this global trend. Um, they want to be um, seen as artists that actually work globally. I'm not an education artist, but I'm an artist working in a global contemporary market. So I think, uh, but if you see, there's always artists that um, works, always speak about the tradition, but at the same time, there are a group of artists that are you know, I don't want to be seen as uh, um, uh, artists with all this kind of like his uh, culture baggage. So um, I think when it comes to trend, um, it, you will always see those two. Uh, because also when it comes to the art market, you always see galleries kind of promoting art. They are not, you know, Indonesian artists, they are not Indonesian, but then you have artists that are um, you know, Indonesian. I hope it kind of answers your questions. But um, um, I think when, when it comes to trend, it will definitely follow the global art market trend, unfortunately. Yes. Mm. I think artists always have an alternative perspective mm. too within any sort of any community or artistic community. There will always be ones that will break you know, be groundbreaking and offer different perspectives. That's what's exciting. Yeah. Mm. Mm. We've got a question there, which I was going to perhaps finish on, but I think we'll, we'll give some more time for more questions to come in. A quick round of the panel. Do we have any Indonesian art community groups that you know of that you can shout out or um, resources that people can explore a little bit further on? Confi, I'm sure you've got a few. Yes, I suppose uh, Jill and I were in this um, the the uh, Australian Nation Art Forum, which is a, a newly established uh, forum that we're we're about to launch, aren't we, Jill? <laughs> we get out of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we hope that that will be a resource for uh, it's it's being supported Australia wide. A uh, few people in from Sydney, uh, we have support in Tasmania. Uh, Canberra and the like with board members spanning uh, uh, quite a few states and the idea is to have have it as a resource in, including websites um, you know people to contact and things to, to connect um, the, the, the two countries even even closer it's especially it's really important during COVID mm -hmm. or, or once we sort of like a bit, bit out of COVID we'll, we'll we'll get we'll we'll get our act together and and uh, and launch the website. But there's also opportunities through um, places like the Australia Council that actually encourage cultural exchange. I mean, we can't do it physically at the moment, but there is the opportunities for online cultural exchange and connection. So thinking about opportunities through that means, through the digital realm, is really important at this time. But there's also the opportunity to take the time to research different galleries and different, I guess, art schools. There's also the opportunity where um, when we brought over some of the artists to Melbourne, they then were introduced to the Victorian College of the Arts and RMIT and opportunities were developed through those connections. So there's an opportunity to, I guess, during this COVID world, through difficulties, other opportunities open up. So um, we can, there is, you know, the potential to look at um, residencies and, you know, we can connect people and create opportunities through those means as well. Oh, and also uh, there's Asia Link. Asia Link. Uh, Santi did a, an amazing series of Asia Link on connecting as well. I think they are available on uh, YouTube as well. Yes, yeah, Santi. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, it's called the Kataka Jao. So if you type Asia Link um, and Santi Saptar, it'll come up. 
Yeah. Excellent. Mm. There was uh, something you just mentioned there, Jill, about COVID-19, which I, I do want to pick up. Santi, you're, you're based in Jakarta. For those of us here in Australia, not, notwithstanding those in lockdown currently, who, who perhaps are not feeling the full effects of, of COVID-19 around the world now, what has that meant for artists in Indonesia and, and how are they faring? Sorry? What's COVID-19 meant for artists in Indonesia? How are they doing? How are they, uh, I guess, finding new ways to work in those conditions? Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's quite amazing because I've been here for one and a half years now. What I really see is uh, perseverance. Uh, and also, uh, you know, Indonesia is always very strong when it comes to community. And I see it even more and more during, uh, during COVID. So a lot of, a lot of uh, when COVID just hit in 2020, a lot of initiatives from private collectors, from galleries who were basically doing shows just to help uh, artists uh, sell the works without getting any commission, for example. There were a lot of initiatives in the beginning. Uh, and then many artists, they are very creative and very entrepreneurial as well. So they started doing a lot of online programming. We are very big with Instagram and Facebook. People don't reply emails, but you can find everybody on Facebook and Instagram and they will reply you. That's, that's, the, you know, that's the way to go in Indonesia. Um, and so it's very common between artists to actually work, among artists to work and collaborate. But what I really see, especially coming from a commercial side of it as a dealer, um, I was quite surprised by the fact that uh, even the commercial uh, scene in Indonesia, we all work together. Like uh, the current trend at the moment in Indonesia is actually with, among galleries that actually do collaboration. So you see like A gallery with B gallery. Uh, and basically we just do things together. Uh, the good thing is 2021, uh, a lot of galleries have uh, started opening their spaces again uh, with, with protocol. Um, and that's definitely helped the artists uh, because you know we start having shows and all that. And art fairs are all, also starting. I think online has been really great in Indonesia last year. And also th this year will be quite uh, a lot of hybrid. So you do online and offline. Yeah. So things definitely picking up really, really quickly now. Mm, in excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a question you can also answer quite aptly, Santi. How do we purchase Indonesian artworks, delivery and storing? I think when it comes to purchase, you can actually look at, you can either from... Uh, uh, auction houses uh, or galleries or directly from artists. Um, delivery, I always suggest um, you roll the works if it's possible, but of course you can only do that for paintings or works on paper. Uh, storing is pretty much the same how you uh, store your artwork, um, you know, and I think Australia has a better uh, weather condition in comparison to, to, to Indonesia. Um, yeah, so I don't think it would be so much different when it comes to story of your artwork. Mm. Yeah. And I think I'd just add to that answer along the lines of, of what we've already spoken about. Finding people to talk about artwork, making those relationships, making those friends is a, is a mm. great way to start purchasing Indonesian artworks and learning yeah. more. We might end Confir with the burning question. Please tell us more about the sculpture in your background. <laughs> but first... Before I answer that, I just want to add, uh, whoever that's buying, starting to collect Indonesian artwork, start with paper. <laughs> uh, tr uh, trust me, learn from me. <laughs> Who's got a problem with storage? Um, paper is great um, because it's very affordable. The quality is fantastic at our nation and you can send them a normal post in a roll mm -hmm. or pack and it's really, really nice. Frame it here. And I think it'll, it'll be a good way to start a collection. Uh, what's behind me, that's a photo. I was trying to find an appropriate photo for today's presentation. Um, I'm a lawyer by day trade, as you know. Um, so I just thought I'd, that's a photo from my uh, storage in Ballarat. The big bunny with quite a few uh, uh, breasts, I suppose. Uh, that's from uh, an artist, a surreal uh, female sculptor called Lakshmi. And that's her representing herself because she's got four, four daughters. Um, and the rest of that sort of like saloon style hanging is just the way we, I, I hang the artworks in my storage because I like to see them all, but I don't have enough space. So they just 
hang as a coating. It's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. You just fit them as much as you can. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's anyway, story of my life. <laughs> Well, thank you all for, for coming along and joining us for this webinar and this session. I've really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed speaking to Santi, Jill and Confir. Thank you to our panelists for joining us. Uh, I'm sure I would echo the comments from all our audience for thanking you for giving us your time and, and perspective. Hopefully we'll follow this up perhaps with a, another um, webinar in the future. Confia, I know we, we talked about exploring even the Australian side of, of the relationship with some of the artists there. So thanks again to everyone and uh, please stay safe. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.